Welcome to Lemons.com in our lab video series on IPv6 on a Cisco router. You can find a complete list of IPv6 video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we will walk you through configuration of BGP in IPv6. We're going to start off with some BGP basic configuration. This will include IBGP and eBGP configuration. Then we will look at some of the BGP parameters, and this includes administrative distance, maximum number of equal cost path, how to enable graceful restart, maximum number of prefix, keep alive, and hold time. Then we will look at how to enable neighbor authentication between BGP peers. For a route advertisement and manipulation, we will look at a default route advertisement, route filter, redistribution, and summarization, ASPath prepend, and route leak. Now in this lab topology, we have three routers, R1, R2, and R3. Each has four loopback interfaces, loopback 0 to loopback 3. All of these interfaces are pre-configured with IPv6 addresses. Now R1 and R3 are connected over VLAN 123, and they will be forming an IBGP with AS number 65013, while R1 and R2 are connected over a serial point-to-point -point link, and R1 will be forming an EBGP with R2 that's in AS number 2. So let's go ahead and start with our task number 1 with basic configuration. We first need to enable EIGRPv6 between R3 and R1 and advertise the loopback 0, and this is to prepare for our IBGP. Next, we need to disable IPv4 BGP, since in this lab we're only dealing with IPv6. And then we need to enable EBGP between R1 and R2 using their serial interface, and then enable IBGP between R1 and R3 using their loopback interface. Then we need to advertise the loopback 3 on R1 and R3 into BGP, and then loopback 0 on R2 into BGP. And then we need to make sure all file routers are capable of exchanging standard extended community. So let's go ahead and take care of that first. Start off with our R1. Then we need to enable EAGRP. So in loopback 0, do IPv6 EAGRP 1. And then on the fast 0, 0, which is the interface facing R3, we also enable EAGRP 1. Then we'll get under the routing process and do a passive default which is always a good idea, and no passive, the interface that we want to create adjacency, which is fast 0, 0. So that's for R1. We need to repeat the same process on R3. EIGRP1, interface fast 0, 0, EIGRP1. And then we do IPv6, router, EIGRP1, passive, default, and then no passive, fast 0, 0. And then if we do show IPv6 router EIGRP, we can see that R3 is now learning R1 loopback. And just to verify a reachability, we can ping R1 loopback from R3 loopback. So we know that we are ready to go for our next uh, configuration for IBGP. Okay, now jumping back to R1 and start our BGP configuration. So we'll get under router BGP and we set the AS number is going to be 65013, which is the private AS number. The new auto, no synchronization. And then we need to disable IPv4 BGP. So the command for that is no BGP, default, IPv4 unicast. Okay, then we'll configure the router ID. And let's just pick the number 1111 for our router 1. Then we're going to have to configure the neighbor first. Let's do configuration for R1 to appear with R2 using the serial interface. So the neighbor is going to, IP is going to be 2001-00122. And then R2 is in AS number 2. Okay, then we have to configure a neighbor command. Now this time is between R1 and R3. So pointing towards R3 loopback interface, 2001 3 with the remote AS, which is the same AS as itself, 65013. And we also want to make sure since the task that used the loopback address to appear, so the command is update source, and then you specify the interface, and for us it's loopback 0. Now with IPv6, once you have configured the neighbor IP address, what you have to do is to get under the address family, IPv6, unicast, and then you have to activate that. So the command is neighbor for R2 is 2001001222. And then you have to activate it. 
and then to do the same thing for R3, which is 2001 3, activate. Okay, while we're in here, well, let's take care of the standard extended community exchange. So to enable that capability, under the neighbor command, you do question mark, there's command sent community. So sent community, the task specified that you want to do both standard extended, so we specify both. And then for R3, we do sent community, and then both. Okay, and the last thing we need to do is to advertise on R1. It's loopback3. And R1 loopback3 is, let's see right here, 2001-102. Then we're going to use network command of 2001-102. And that is slash 64. So let's do a quick show run. And look at what we have configured so far. Router ID, disable IPv4, BGP, neighbor configuration. Then you activate them under the address family IPv6, send community for both, and advertise is loopback3. Okay, so that should be all the configuration that we need on R1. Let's move on to R2 and complete the other side of eBGP. First, let's do debug BGP all. Then we'll get under router BGP2, which is our AS number, and no auto. Summary, no synchronization, and then disable IPv4 BGP. Give it a router ID. Let's choose 2222, although the task did not really require us to do so. And then configure the neighbor, which is the IP of the CO interface of R1, and that is 2001.0.0.1.2. One with the remote AS of 65013, and now we get under the address family IPv6 up arrow to the neighbor command and then activate. And also, we want to do sync community just to match the other side. Both you can see as soon as we activate the neighbor, you can see a whole lot of messages show up, which we'll go through in a second here. And on R2, let's double check with our task list. We need to advertise the loopback zero. So R2 loopback zero is 2001, two slash 128. Okay, now if you do show IPv6 route BGP, you can see that we have, R2 has received R1 loopback three IPs right here, our subnet. You can see the next top is actually our one link local address on the Sierra interface. And if you do show IPVGP, IPv6, unicast summary. Here we can see that we have a receive one prefix from R1 and that's the R1 IP, uh, neighbor IP address. And now if you can try to ping R1 loopback three, which is 201. I should use 101. One. one is 102, I think. Okay. And then source from loopback zero. You can see that it's pingable. Let's disable our debug and then scroll up and go through the debug output real quick. So as soon as we activate the neighbor command, it went from idle to connect. And then it went through the exchange of open messages. You got here capability exchange. And then it went from connect to open send from open sent to open confirm and then open confirm to establish, which is the state that we are in right now. And then got the message that the neighbor adjacency is now up. You can see once the adjacency came up, it starts exchanging routing updates. So here where the R1 advertised to R2, it's loop back three. And then here R2 just go through a walk through the routing updates. Okay, so now that we have eBGP session up between R1 and R2, let's go back to R3 and complete our iBGP configuration. We already have the EIGRP configured and R1, R3 loopback zero exchanged. So we should now be ready to go ahead and complete our iBGP, getting under router BGP 65013, no auto summary, no synchronization, and then disable IPv4 BGP, configure the router ID just to be consistent. We use 3333 
and then neighbor command pointing to R1 loopback interface with the remote AS of 565013. And then we make sure to source from the loopback zero. And we get under the address family IPv6, activate the neighbor. Actually, before we do that, let's do send community. So let's make sure that we have that configuration in there both before we go ahead and activate the neighbor. So actually it's asking us to activate the neighbor first, which is fine. So let's do that and then up arrow, send community both. And I believe we need to advertise R3 loopback3 into BGP as well. So network and loopback3 is 2001302 slash 64. Okay, now if you do show IP BGP IPv4 unicast, we should be able to see routes in the BGP table. And here we have received R1 loopback3 interface coming from 2001, which is R1 loopback0. And then we have R3 loopback3, which is its own routes right here. You can tell by the next top, which is zero. That means it's locally originated and the weight by default is 32768. So one thing you might notice here is this route right here, which is R2 loopback0. There's no uh, greater than sign in front of it, which means that route is currently not being used. And if we do show IPv6 route BGP, you can see that this particular route is currently not installed in our three routing table. And this is because currently the next top for that route, which is the serial interface IP of R2 is not reachable. So going back to our diagram here, as R2 advertised its loopback to R1 and R1 advertised to R3, that next top address did not get updated by R1. So this is coming in through the eBGP session. So R1 just pass it right through. And since this serial point to point link subnet is not known by R3, it claims that the route next top is not reachable, therefore it doesn't install that route into this routing table. And obviously if you're trying to ping R2 loopback one, you'll see that it failed. Okay, so it's, there's actually two things that we can do here. One is to advertise this point-to-point -point subnet over EIGRP, so R3 has a knowledge of that and can reach basically the next top, or look up the next top, which is R2 zero interface, or we can also configure R1 to reset the next top IPs to itself, and that way R3 use R1 as to being the next top, and then we'll be able to use that route. So that's what we're going to do. So on R1, we'll get back under router BGP 65013 address IPv6, and then the command we're going to do is neighbor 2001 3, and then do next top self. That means any routes that's being learned by R1. It will reset the next top before it advertises it to its IBGP neighbors. So once you do that, we might need to clear before we do that. Let's see if uh, R3 will see that route coming in with the uh, one being the next top already. So the command we want is show IPBGP IPv6 unicast. And that hasn't been updated yet, so we might need to do a soft clear on the BGP. So that would be clear IPBGP. Let's see, we can do 2001, 3 out. Let's try that one more time. And you can see right there, the next top has been changed to R1. And now you can see a little greater than sign in front of the route itself. And if you look at the routing table, show IP v6 route BGP one more time, you can see that that route has been installed into R3 routing table. And let's go back and try to ping also. We might be sourcing from a incorrect interface. I think it's supposed to be loopback three. And you can see when you source from loopback 3 of R3, we can reach R2 loopback 0. Okay, now before we move on, let's do a couple more show commands on R1. So show IP BGP IPv6 unicast. So these are the routing of BGP table on R1. So it's got R2 loopback 0, and then R3 loopback 3, and then it's on loopback, again, the next top of 0. If you do summary at the end, then we'll see that it currently has two peers. One is IBGP and the other one is EBGP. And then we can also look at the detail, the neighbor details also. It gives you a little bit more information as far as the whole time keep alive, which you'll adjust in a second here, how long it's been up for. Uh, capability route refresh, address family IPv6 unicast, obviously, since we're exchanging IPv6 routes right now. Okay. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the second half of task number one. So on R1, we want to ensure that BGP session is brought down immediately when the physical link is down. We also want to enable BGP graceful restart. 
you want to allow up to 32 equal cost paths for both IBGP and EBGP. And then we want to change the AD for external, internal, and local to 19, 199, and 19 respectively. Okay, so on R1, we'll go under the router BGP one more time, 65013. And first, let's take care of the first requirements right here, which is to bring down the BGP session immediately. And the command for that is BGP fast external failover. Actually, let me do BGP question mark. And right here where it said, uh, the description said immediately reset session if the link to the directly connected external peer goes down. Okay, so enable fast external failover, although it might be enabled by default already. We just want to make sure. So enter. Next, we need to enable BGP graceful restart. And the command is right here, graceful restart capability. Now you can also adjust the restart time or stale path time. Just going to go ahead and use the default. Although it said that the BGP session would need to be reset, and that's because of the capability that needs to be exchanged since we just uh, switch it on. So we need the peers to exchange the capability before we can start using it. So let's go ahead and do clear IP BGP all. Let's do a hard clear. I'm just going to wait while it's still coming up. Let's get under addressed family IPv6. Next, we're going to allow maximum equal cost path up to 32 for both IBGP and BGP. So the command for that, now that we under the address family IPv6 is the maximum path. You can go up to 32, so we'll choose 32 and that's for EBGP. If you want to enable the same thing for IBGP, you need to specify a separate line of command for IBGP and then type 32. The last thing is to adjust the administrative distance. So the command is distance BGP. Now first, for the external route, we said instead of the default 20, we want to lower it down to 19. Now for internal, we want to add 199 instead of 200. And for local, we're just going to match the external BGP route as well, which is 19. So 19, 199, and 19. Now if you do show IPv6, router BGP, You'll see that the route that we received from R2, which is external route or EBGP route, has an AD of 19 and the IBGP route from R3 is now 199. So we know that our command took effect.